Hello, my name is Leo, and welcome to another reading of the Elder Scrolls. Today we're going to be reading Master Zorazan's Tale by Ginanth. The Temple of Two Moons Dance in Torval has for many years, many hundreds of years, been the finest training ground in all of Tamriel for warriors of foot and fist. The masters teach students of all ages, from all parts of the empire, the most ancient techniques of and the most modern variations, and many a former pupil has graduated to great fame. As I, my, I myself trained there, and as a young child, I remember asking my master, Zorafm, Zorayam? which former student he felt had best learned the lessons of the temple. I was not a teacher when I met this man, but a student myself, he said, smiling in reminiscence, his great wrinkled face becoming even more like the withered fruit of the bathroom tree. This was long ago, before your parents were born. For many years I had trained at the temple, rising to study wait wait rising yeah rising to study in more difficult and demanding cases, taught by the wisest and most learned masters of the two moons dance. Uh who's talking? It's the same guy. Oh. Enough. You will come to understand the tempering of your body. That the tempering of your body must attend to the tempering of your mind. There is... wait. Sorry. And there is a prescribed order of training we at the temple have designed... What's going on with this voice? Don't worry about it. Have designed over the years in concordance with the way of Riddle Thar. I have reached the highest skill level where my power and skill were such that even my supernatural magical means few could ever few, few could ever could mm, few could ever could best me in weaponless combat. She's still talking. Jesus Christ, it's all him. Ah, it's all the old man's voice. There was a servant at the temple at the time. A Denma. A few years older than myself, and those in many my class. We had never noticed him, but in passing over the years, he would, uh, he, for, God damn it. We had never noticed him, but in passing over the years, for he would enter the training chambers quietly, clean for a few minutes' time, and leave without saying a word. Not that we would have listened if he had spoke, so enraptured were we in our exercises and lessons. When our last master told some of us, myself included, that the time had come for us to leave the temple or become teachers, there was a great festival of celebration. The main himself deigned to visit and observe our ceremony. You should be talking about Kajit, you realize. Yeah, whatever. The main himself deigned to visit the ceremony. As we were at a temple of philosophy and combat, there were contests of debate and con competitions in the temple war arena. Not only among the elite few, but open to all students. On the first day of the temple, I was examining the gladiatorial roster to see who I would fight with first. When I heard a conversation behind me, the servant speaking to the archpriest of the temple. It was the first time I heard the Dunmer's voice, and the first time I heard his name. I'm gonna drink. His voice is a bad idea. Well, I'm committed to it now, so. <laughs> oh god. How many pages? Ah, Jesus. We'll get there, we'll get there. Wait, there's a different guy now. Oh, different guy's talking. How many quotation marks are there? Like, four. It's crazy. I understand you wish to enjoy your people struggling more when time. The Archpriest was saying, I'm sorry to hear that. You have been in 
You have been an institution here for many, many years, and you will be missed. If there's anything I can do for you, please name it. Thank you for your kindness, the Dunbar replied. I do have a request, but I fear you would be loath to grant it. Ever since I first came to the temple, I have been watching the students learn and practiced myself when uh, my duties allowed for it. I know I am but a servant here, but I would be honored if you would allow me to compete in the war arena. I stifled back my grasp at the mayor's impotence to even suggest that he would be worthy to fight with those of us who had trained so hard. To my surprise, the archpriest agreed and added the name Taran of Mathwin to the roster at the beginner's level. I was eager to whisper the news to my fellow elites, elite students, but my first bout was scheduled to begin in a few minutes' time. I fought 18 competitions in a row, best of all. I'll have you know. The crowd gathered in the arena. The guy, the, wait, the crowd? God damn it. The crowd gathering in the arena. Just fix it, just, just fix the crowd. Knew of my prowess and gave polite, unsurprised applaud. At the end of each time, at the end of each fight. As much as I focused on my own battles, I could not help noticing that other competitions were receiving Competitions or competitors? Don't worry about it. We're receiving more and more attention in the arena. The spectators whispered among themselves and more began drifting away to see something that was evidently more spectacular and unusual than my unbroken string of victories. One of the most important lessons that we teach in the Two Moons Dance is the lesson of rejecting one's vanity. I understood then the importance of achieving a personal synchro- God damn it! synchronicity with one's body and mind. Of rebuffing outside influences of no importance, but I admit I had not accepted the lesson in my heart. I knew I was good, but my pride was hurt. It came down to a contest of champions, and I was the one of the two. When I saw who the other fighter would be, my mood turned from one of wounded dignity to complete disbelief. My adversary was the servant Taran. Who's talking? I don't know. It must be a joke, or some final philosophical test, I reasoned. Then I looked on into the crowd and saw the anticipation, oh God, blah, 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 anticipation of a great battle to come in every eye. We gave one another the sign of respect, I stiffly, I stiffly? Oh, I stiffly, and he with great elegance and modesty, the fight began. Initially, I sought to end it quickly, still thinking that he was unworthy to be cleaning the arena, let alone fighting in it. In retrospect, I was being illogical. As I have, as I must have known, he had bested as many students as I to reach that final level. He offered simple counter blows to my attacks and responded in kind. His style was expansive, encompassing sophisticated arcade footplay one moment and simple jabs and kicks the next. I tried assailments intended to dazzle, but his face never showed either fear nor contempt of my abilities. The fight lasted for a long time. I noticed that they um, don't use, put the quotation marks at the end of every paragraph, which is wrong. Whatever. Someone's hooning outside, it's freaking me out. The fight lasted for a long time. I don't recall when I realized I was destined to lose, but it was but when it ended, I was not surprised with the outcome. With a sense of unusual and true modesty, I bowed to him. But I could not resist asking him, as we left the arena, to the sound of thunderous applause, how he had so secretly grown to become a master. Oh those hoons. Fuck those hoons. They're just driving like really shitty motorcycles. Like really slowly. Not actually going fast. Just going like in neutral or whatever. Stupid. Can you put a bike can you put a motorcycle in neutral? No. Actually I don't know. 
Oh, shut up. I assume you can't hear it. My bad. God damn, that music is so loud. Anyway. The game music, I'm afraid. I hope it's not overshadowing me. I'll have to check after I finish recording. Anyway, back to the story. I never had a choice. Wait, that's not this guy. Alright. I never had a choice to rise in the temple. Taran replied. Every day I clean the training chambers with the elite classes and then the beginners. So you see, I never had the misfortune to forget those early mistakes, lessons, and teachings while observing and learning the ways of the masters. He left a vow early the next morning to return to his homeland, and I never saw him again, though I've heard people say he's become a priest and a teacher. I became a teacher as well for children just beginning their training in the two moons, as well as the elite, and I make certain to bring my best pupils to see how the unlearned fight, so that they might never forget. Oh. Well, that was Master Zorm's Tale by Gil Nanth. And this has been another reading of the Elder Scrolls, but for now, my name is Leo, and I will see you next time.